Hello, my name is Alexander Hu, and I am a coordinating senior attorney in the Immigrant Protection Unit at the New York Legal Assistance Group. I will be presenting on the topic of how to change your address with immigration. I'd like to start off by saying that this presentation contains a number of screenshots of forms and of websites. So feel free to pause this video and recording at any time to take your time to review these images before resuming the video to continue following along. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about ONA, or the New York State Office for New Americans, which belongs to the state of New York and is dedicated to assisting new immigrants. New York State recognizes that new immigrants contribute to our economy and are an integral part of our community. I'd also like to talk a little bit about my organization, NILAG, which stands for the New York Legal Assistance Group and is a nonprofit organization that provides free legal services, financial advice, and advocates for policies to assist low-income people. We are not part of the government, and NILAG is a nonprofit organization. I'd also like to talk about a brief disclaimer. The general information provided in this presentation is not legal advice and cannot replace the advice of a licensed attorney. We recommend that you seek the advice of an attorney to determine your eligibility before you apply for any immigration benefit or status. By providing this information, NILAC does not offer legal representation or advice, nor does it establish an attorney-client relationship. To begin, I'll discuss and give an overview of the immigration system and the basics. First, there are a number of common immigration agencies that make up the immigration system. One of those agencies is called the Department of Justice or DOJ for short. Within the DOJ exists the Office, Executive Office for Immigration Review or EOIR, which is also known as the Immigration Court or Immigration Court System. Another major government agency is the Department of Homeland Security or DHS. Within DHS is the Customs and Border Protection or CBP. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, and U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, or USCIS for short. For the Department of Homeland Security, there are two agencies that we will discuss in this slide. The first is CBP, or Customs and Border Protection. This agency is responsible for conducting arrests and detentions the borders of the United States. They also keep biographical and private information and are responsible for fingerprinting for identification purposes. USCIS is an agency in the service of immigrants and they are in charge with coordinating and handling work permits as well as in asylum applications for those who are not in immigration, immigration court proceedings. They're also responsible for handling applications for permanent residency and humanitarian visa applications. The third agency on this slide is Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE. They're in charge with conducting arrests and detentions within the United States. They also handle ICE check-in appointments and they supervise those in de deportation proceedings. ICE also keeps your address and phone number information. They have the power to arrest and detain anyone without legal status, and they have priorities and generally focus on people with criminal records. ICE does not have the power to order your deportation while away from the border. Within ICE also exists the prosecutor's office, and they represent the government in immigration court proceedings. The ICE is also in charge of carrying out deportation if an immigration judge in court orders it. Next, we'll talk about EOIR, or the Executive Office for Immigration Review. This is the immigration court. The judges that work at the immigration court are employees of the federal government. They decide deportation cases and they can grant legal status 
or they can order deportation. There is a right to appeal if the judge orders you deported, and the appellate court, which will decide the appeal, is also part of the federal government. Well, here are some screenshots of common immigration documents that you may run into. The first one is called Notice of Peer, or NTA, which is the charging document that immigration issues to you to notify you that it is starting removal proceedings or deportation proceedings against you in court. The image to the right is the Form I-385, or Notice to Report, which tells you to report to an ICE office within 60 days. On this slide on the left is an image of an order of release on recognizance or ROR for short, which is issued to some immigrants who were detained and then released. It should tell you when and where you need to go for your check-in appointment with ICE. The image of the right is of a document called supervision order, which is a document that ICE issues to keep track of your check-in appointments. Next, we uh, address the question of how do you change your address with USCIS if you move? First, who needs to change their address with USCIS? Well, everyone who is not a US citizen must inform USCIS within 10 days each time they move or change address. What are the consequences if you do not do so? Well, if you have a pending application, and do not report your address to USCIS, you won't be able to receive important letters or information regarding your pending case. And this could affect your case and could cause you to lose the immigration benefit that you've applied for. Also, if you do not change your address with USCIS after moving, you could be charged with a misdemeanor. So how do you change your address with USCIS? You can change your address through your USCIS online account if you filed your application online or by calling USCIS customer service at 1-800-375-5283 or by submitting form AR11 by mail or online through the following website. Now, what information is needed to change your address with USCIS? First off, you will need your A number or alien number. The A number is a unique identification number assigned to anyone who has had contact with immigration officials. And the A number is found on almost all immigration documents. Just like in those images of the forms that we saw earlier, um, a number of those forms should all have your A number on them. Other information you'll need to change your address will be your receipt number for any pending application. For example, if you've applied for asylum or for a work permit application, your new address, your old address, your email address if you're making the change of address online, and your printed form AR11 if you're doing it by mail. Here are some example images of documents that will have your information on them. On the left is an example of an asylum application receipt notice. And you can take a look and pause the video to review this example image and see where your receipt number would be, your A number your B would be, and where uh, the date of receipt of the application would be. And on the right is a work permit receipt notice. This also will have similar information, including your receipt number, A number, and date of receipt. Now, how do you file a change of address form AR11 online? First, you'll wanna visit this following website. That will take you to the website that should look like this screenshot here, where you will click the button, that, the blue button that says file online. That will then take you to this, uh, this notification page. After you've read that, and if you have an 
application pending with USCIS, you will want to click yes here. For each pending application that you have before USCIS, you will want to add the form number and the receipt number of that application. And again, you can refer to the receipt uh, notice documents for that information. Below, you will then want to enter your full name, date of birth, and your A number. Further in the website will be an area where you will have to enter your old address, your previous address on the left, and your current and new address on the right. You will also see an area to enter your mailing address if you use a different mailing address than where you live. Next, you'll want to enter your email address. And then you will want to select either applicant or petitioner for your form. Then you'll have to do security check, check the box at the end, and then click submit. After you've done so, keep a copy of the change of address card with the confirmation number. You should receive a letter confirming the change of address to your new address within three to four weeks. If you don't receive that, you can call USCIS customer service at that number and have your A number and change of address confirmation handy. How do you submit a form AR11 by mail? You will first want to visit the following website to download and print the AR11 form. Fill in your information, including your name, your A number, your previous address, and your new address. Sign it and enter the date. Make sure you make a copy of it. And then after filling it out and signing it and making a copy, send the original to the following address. Here's an example of a filled out AR11 form that is ready to be printed and signed and dated and mailed by physical mail. If you're an applicant for a certain type of visa, you will want to keep this in mind. For example, if you're an applicant for VAWA, which is based on domestic violence, a T visa based on human trafficking, a U visa as a crime victim, or an I-751 waiver based on domestic violence or abuse, you will want to print the AR-11 form and mail that to the following address. This would be the only way that you can change your address. Next, we'll discuss what do you need to do with the immigration court if you move? Who needs to change address with the immigration court? Only people with an active case in immigration court have to notify the court of any change of address. If the immigration court has your information in the system, you have an active case. Not everyone who received documents at the border has an active case in court may take months or longer for your case to become active in court. In order to know if you have an active case, you can either call 1-800-898-7180 or visit the following website. Now, how do you know if you have an active case in immigration court? And how do you check your next hearing date? You can check your case information with EOIR through this website and type in your A number to check your case. This will give you information about your next hearing, your judge's name, address, and court phone number. Now, if this information does not appear in the system, this means that the notice to appear or NTA has not yet been filed with the court and you will not be able to file a change of address.
In addition to the website, you can also call the EOIR hotline number. Once you have called, you can press 2 for Spanish if you would need that. You can then enter your A number, also known as a foreign registration number or alien number, through the phone numbers. Make sure to only enter the numbers or the numerals, not the letter A. The message will repeat the A number to confirm. If you entered it correctly, press 1. If you entered it incorrectly, press 2 to re-enter the number. If your A number comes up in the immigration court system, you will hear a message spelling out your name. Press 1 to confirm your name. Then press 1 again to find out the date, time, and location of your next hearing. How to change the address with the immigration court using a physical form. The physical form is called form EOIR33. And this form informs the immigration court of your new address so that they can mail important information to you. Under the law, it is mandatory to file form EOIR33 within five business days of the change of address. Form EOIR33 can be filed by mail or online. Now, what information do you need to change your address with the immigration court? Again, you will need your A number. You also need your new address and phone number, your previous address, the form EOIR33, the address of the immigration court where you have your next hearing, which you can look up by calling that number or by visiting this website, and the address of the government attorneys in the city where your next hearing is. You can look that uh, that information up at this website. How to submit form EOIR33 by postal mail. You can go ahead and download and print the EOIR33 form for the court that has jurisdiction, which means the court that comes up when you check the immigration system. And then you can fill out an EOIR33 for each respondent. The below is the website for you to visit to download and print that form. Parents may sign for minors, which are defined as people under the year under the age of 14. For proof of service at the bottom of the page, write the address of the government attorney's office in the city where your next hearing is located. And you can look up the address at this website. Sign in two places below the change of address and the certificate of service at the bottom. Make sure you make a copy and send it to the government attorney's office in the city where your next hearing is. And then send the original EOIR 33 to the address of the immigration court hearing your case. Lastly, make sure you keep a copy of the EOIR 33 for yourself in a safe place. Here's an image of what the form EOIR33 looks like. As you can see and pointed out in this image are areas for you to write your complete name, your A number, your previous address and phone number, your new address and phone number, signing your name, dating, and writing the address of the government attorney's office. Now we're going to talk about how to do this form EOIR 33 over the internet. You can do it online by visiting this website here. Below is a screenshot of the uh, initial page that you will see when you visit the website. After you read the instructions, you can go ahead and click the next button. That will then take you to this page where you will fill out your complete name and A number. And you will also select on the bottom the court where you have your next appointment. When you're ready for that, you can go ahead and click the blue next button. On the next page, you will see 
areas where you can enter your previous address, which includes a house number, name of street apartment number, or floor, city, state, and zip code. And if you've changed your phone number or email address, you can type the old information here. And, and then when you're ready, you can click the blue button uh, to, to proceed. On the next page, you will enter your new address, which includes the number of your home, name of the street, apartment number or floor, city, state, and zip code. If you changed your phone number or email address, you can type the new information here. And when you're ready, you can click the blue next button. That should then take you to this page where you will verify the information is correct by, click, by clicking on click to review to review the completed form. Once you've reviewed it and made sure that everything is correct, you can write your full name where it says signature and date and select the government attorney's office in the city where your next hearing is. Again, you can check that information uh, when, through the website or the hot, EOIR hotline. You can enter your email address if you'd like to receive electronic notifications, and you can type your complete name where it says signature and date, check the box, and then click send when you are ready and finished. After you submit form EOIR 33, you must download the copy and mail it to the government attorney's office in the city where your next hearing is. You can search for that address at this website. So just to reiterate, the online form will only be submitted to EOIR or the immigration court. You will still have to download a copy of that form and mail it physically to the government attorney's office. Make sure you also save another copy for yourself in a safe place. Now, what happens after changing your address for the immigration court? Sometimes when you change your address, your case changes jurisdictions. A change of venue is a legal term that refers to the transfer of a case to another court. Not all changes of address change the jurisdiction of the court. You can ask the court to make this case transfer by filing a formal petition for change of venue by mail or by appearing in person at your next hearing. Under what circumstances might a change of venue by mail be necessary? Well, if you move to another state or another city under the jurisdiction of a different court and are unable to travel to the court that has jurisdiction of your previous address, you would want to do that. Next, we'll discuss what do you need to do with ICE if you move? First off, who needs to change your address with ICE? Well, it is people who are required to report to ICE who will then need to notify them of any change of address. You may be required to report if you were detained by agents at the border or they advised you that you had to make an appointment to appear at an immigration office in a few weeks or a few months later, or if they gave you a phone and you are using an app to contact them. Now we'll discuss how to change your address with ICE. You can change your address with ICE either in person when you go to your next appointment under a supervision order or by email to the field office email address here or by calling them at this number. Lastly, you can also go online by visiting the website here to change your address with ICE. We'll go through the process now of how to change your address with ICE online. If you go to and visit that website, you should see this page here where you can enter your complete uh, name and A number and place of birth. You'll want to check the CAPTCHA box to verify that you are a person and then click Submit. That should then take you to this page 
where you will enter your new address and click Submit. If the website does not allow you to submit the address change online, you must call this number to do so. Lastly, what do you need to do with the postal office if you move? Now we'll discuss how to change your address with the post office or USPS. If you applied for asylum, but are still waiting for your receipt notice and fingerprint appointment to arrive, you must file a permanent change of address request with the USPS post office to have your mail forwarded correctly to your new address. You can request a permanent change of address with USPS online or in person at a local post office. Here are the steps to change your address with the US post office online. First, you'll want to go to the USPS official change of address website at this link. Then you'll choose an option for an individual, family, or business move and complete the form. Third, you'll verify your identity. Register online to receive verification code or link on your cell phone, or go to a post office with an acceptable photo ID to complete the identity verification process in person. Next, you'll pay the $1.10 identity verification fee. Next, USPIS will send you a confirmation code via email. Use that code if you need to modify or cancel your application. Then a welcome kit will arrive at your new address with coupons from USPS partners. Last, the mail will be redirected to your new address piece by piece. Now we'll go over how to change your address with the post office in person. First, you'll visit your local post office location with an acceptable photo ID. Then you'll request a free mover's guide package. You'll then need to comp complete form PS3575 located inside the package and give it to the retail associate. They will use your photo ID to verify your identity and then process the change of address request. Finally, the mail will be redirected to your new address. This chart provides an overview of each of the government agencies that we've discussed. Because they are separate agencies, it is important to remember that we have to follow the separate procedures that we've gone over throughout this presentation for each corresponding agency. For example, for USCIS, we will then see who needs to change their address. It's every person who is not a U.S. citizen. How do we change the address with USCIS? We can either do it online or by mail using Form AR-11, online with your USCIS account or by phone. For ICE, we will see who needs to change their address. It's individuals under order of recognizance or supervision order. And then how does one change their address with ICE? They can do it in person, or at their next appointment or online. For EOIR or immigration court, people with an active court case are the ones who will have to change their address and notify EOIR. They can do so by doing that online or by mail using EOIR 33 form. For the post office, everyone will need to change their address with them and notify the post office to continue receiving mail and they can do so in person, at a local post office, or online. Again, it's very, very important to emphasize that changing your address with one agency does not change your address with the other. You must change your address with each agency separately. Lastly, as I reach the end of this presentation, I would like to go over and provide some resources additionally for you to use and to consult uh, with, with uh, more information that may pertain to your immigration situation. 
feel free to visit these websites for uh, additional information. And thank you for tuning into this presentation. I hope this will provide you with a lot of helpful uh, information and resources for your case.